So similarly, uh, you know, you can just take up the concept and you can keep on simulating larger and larger systems. So for example, this right here is a gas turbine simulation. All right, so this gas turbine simulation is also being done in CFD, right? Again, <clears throat> look at the level of complexity here. So these right here, this is your swirler. So this is swirler number one, swirler number two, three, four, and five. So the objective of the swirlers is to take the flow and it's going to spin the flow around. Okay, so it's going to spin the flow around. And what you're doing is you are basically simulating the combustion process. How are you simulating the combustion process? Well, if I go to the start of the video, you can see that here, right here, there's a spark. It is basically like your, you know, if you have a, for example, if you have a gas stove and if you're using a match to light, light it, that's exactly what you're doing here. So you're lighting it here in this location. And we are interested in seeing how this is cap getting spread. So for example, currently burner number three is on fire, right? So burner number three, the, ga the gas is getting combusted right away. So which burner would get combusted next? Well, we don't know, right? But with CFD, you can just run it. You can simulate it. So if flame is coming in, it's spreading. And first actually burner number four gets fired. And then it's burner number two. And then if you just wait, you can see that right here, right here, you're getting uh, flame from burner number five and then burner one starts and then everything starts to combust you are getting this uniform temperature field almost uniform temperature field so this type of a simulation is uh, very very useful for uh, you know companies that make gas turbines because they are able to you know uh, predict how uniform the temperature distribution is what is the order in which the burners are firing and so on again all of this is done using cfd we are basically uh, uh, simulating flow and we are also simulating combustion the software that I'm using for this is Converge CFD software. Why am I using Converge CFD to do this? Well, for complex geometries and whenever the flow is complex, Converge is much, much better when compared to other tools such as ANSYS Fluent, for example. So the other question that people ask me is, you know, how, like, what do you need to know? Like, what is the required knowledge to basically do these type of simulations? So the first thing that you need to know is what the, what are the governing equations? And I showed you what the governing equations are. And then be, and then you need to learn something called as numerical discretization. So this is basically the process that allows you to solve your CFD equations on a computer. So then we will be talking about classifications of partial differential equations. So here you will learn how to, you know, what are the different types of PDEs because at the end of the day, your Navier-Stokes equations is nothing but a bunch of PDEs. So learning how to solve them is very important. And the first step you need to know is what are the classifications, what are the types of PDEs? And only then you can think about solving them. Then there are a couple of solution algorithms. How do I, what algorithm do I so use to solve for my velocity and temperature and pressure? There are two techniques, implicit integration and explicit integration techniques and then you have something called as boundary condition implementation since it's a partial differential equation you need a boundary condition and also an initial condition what type of boundary condition is valid what type of boundary condition is not valid you need to understand that and then if you go into a little bit more detail you have something called as finite volume method and finite difference method and finite element method you need to understand what is the difference between all these three methods. Okay, and finally, you have something called as modeling physics. Now, in addition to this, if you have turbulence, if you have spray or if you have combustion, then you need to be solving additional equations for that as well. So the other thing that I that people generally ask me is what type of work can you expect when you do CFD properly? Well, there are three ways to go about it. One is uh, you can be a CFD developer, you can be an applications engineer, or you can go with testing. So these are the three roles in which you can get in. So a CFD developer is basically a mechanical engineer or an aerospace engineer who is writing code in C++ or Fortran or C and they're building their own CFD solver. And that is what is, you know, that this is the type of people that built ANSYS Fluent, Star CCM or Converge. The second type of engineer is an application engineer. So an application engineer is someone who knows, who has good subject matter knowledge. They know about engines, they know about gas turbines you know, all that stuff. And they use a CFD software like ANSYS and they help OEMs design better products. 
So they would work with clients like General Motors, Ford or something like that. And they would basically tell them how to use the tool so that they can get accurate results. So that is what an application engineer is. A CFD testing engineer is basically someone who is working in companies like Ansys itself. The purpose of their, the, the purpose of a testing engineer is to make sure that uh, the software Ansys has sufficient quality. So it, you can think, think of this as quality control, but, up for, uh, but for software engineering applications. I hope you guys joined the course and uh, thank you for attending today's presentation. Mm -hmm.